we will hold or withhold public comment until the end of uh, our workshop. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Brian to go down. Passed out was proposed 2021 budget. Uh, there's a couple of different documents that will get the count of the packet. One is the actual proposed budget report, which we are being told here. Um, to understand where the projections come from, there's budget actuals for the past four fiscal years that were included. So you have budget actuals for year end for year 17, 18, 19, basically up through where we are now in 2020. So a lot of the numbers are pretty much also trends or contractual obligations. Um, also enclosed is a summary. It's kind of like the cheat sheet for the budget. Just got a one page of notable items, curtain changes. Um, and then to start, we're going to just pull up their actual budget report. And then I'll walk through uh, kind of page per page and we'll point out pertinent issues. And if you have any comments, concerns, or questions, just jump in. Hey, Joe, before you jump into that, let me be the one I can not talk to some others and commend you on your presentation and what we have to talk about. This, this is, uh, is very thorough. Um, and, and it explains a lot of what is going on in our community and uh, where the money is allocated. So, so we appreciate the time and effort you put in this. Thanks. And authorize this to be advertised. If you don't know anything about how original works, you read this, you, you understand the nuts and bolts of how the local government functions. Uh, really, uh, I always been taught you understand the money, you understand the town. And, uh, it's kind of nice for you to put line item by line item, but also puts an error. So basically, it explains how everything functions, how it's part of the staff, and where your tax dollars are. It's really essential. So this will be a part of the website. Council's working on this is a proposal. All right, so if we could just jump to page four, this starts like the, the 2021 budget message. Uh, 21 budget is a balanced budget, no tax increases or, or proposed. Um, each fund is balanced for revenue, people's expenditures. All funds combined next year, it's kind of slightly different priorities because of the capital improvement projects. But uh, the total budget for next year is $7,913,483. Um, going into the general fund, uh, we're on track to end this year with a surplus. Uh, it will add to the fund balance. The fund balance is projected to be at the end of this year 1.6 mil. So it's very helpful. And we've reviewed this budget with the finance committee a week ago, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, we talked about starting to transfer some of that fund balance to capital project funds next year. Um, so this is basically the budget also serves as our year end report. It highlights 2020 accomplishments. Uh, the finance committee, we were talking that at our December meeting when the council adopts this, I know in the past we've done a slideshow that shows what we did, where your money went for prior year and where we're going. Uh, the 2020 accomplishments we'll put into like a presentation so that you can share with the public in a more better place. Yeah, yeah like, it, it all sounds good. Uh, the 2021 budget process and how it consistent we started this back on September 1st. I solicited input from all the department heads and committee chairs. For September and October, we put it together, kind of taking everyone's wish list, what we can do, what we can't do. Um, to be very honest with you, most of everyone's wishes have been on to a certain degree, so it's actually pretty decent. We reviewed this with the Finance Committee on the 20th. Uh, public notice for this meeting we published on October 23rd. It leads us to tonight for, you know, next meeting is November 2nd for our first budget meeting. Uh, our plan is so that we'll authorize this for advertisement on November 9th and then adopt it um, by resolution on December 14th. So, pretty clean, straightforward. Going into the general fund, uh, real estate taxes, like I said, there's no changes proposed for next year, keeping the millage the same as 6.5 on buildings, 10 mills on land. Uh, real estate taxes basically talk about consists of 53% of our budget, so it's our main source of revenue here. There, there is no further change. Is there any questions on real estate taxes? Going into Act 511 taxes, these are like the business taxes uh, and such. I can jump here a little bit. 
I don't want to innovate you guys. But here's what we're going to do is I'm going to just do a quick overview here through the narratives. And then when we get to the actual dollar sections, uh, the last pay, uh, last column is the change between the fiscal years. It kind of makes it easy to get, see something that jumps out to you. It's going to jump out in that last column. Uh, Act 11 taxes, uh, there really is not too much of a change, but there is significant decrease, or slight decrease in this approach tax next year, basically, because the pandemic will continue next year. Charges for services and permits. Uh, I'm proposing uh, an increase in street opening permits from $50 to $150 per street opening, just because our fee does do it's too low for street openings. The only ones that really pay is the providers. And then we also propose an increase in fee on municipal legal from 15 to 50. Fines and forfeitures, um, they're actually decreased going into next year due to just the, the performance. There hasn't been much activity due to the pandemic. So fines and forfeitures kind of marry or match what's actual for 2020. Interest earnings, it's actually proposed to earn 50% uh, less than what we are this year, so that number has been dropped. Intergovernmental entitlements include uh, pretty much allocations from Commonwealth. There's a slight decrease anticipated with pension aid, basically due to the turnover in police officer and for a manager that the wages are certified, but next year that can be recouped. I think I, I jumped over something in Act 11 taxes. Uh, what we budget for earned income taxes is essentially being increased by $60,000. That number was conservatively budgeted for over the past four or five years, which is a good thing, but I think we're cheating ourselves out of potential revenue there, just on the budget side. What we actually collected doesn't change. So I, I'm just budgeting what collections were. So that, that's the big increase on the job Miscellaneous revenue sources. This is pretty much what you get from your insurance dividend, health savings account reimbursement from employees. It's pretty much status quo uh, for 2020. Next year shows the sale of uh, two police cars and public works trucks that come into this. Fund transfers of wage reimbursements. This is essentially reimburses the general fund for services that the, the office does. And public works and for garbage and sewer activities. Uh, I propose that we increase the reimbursement from the sewer fund for manager and assistant manager's wages to 5%. Essentially, a lot of our time is all sewage and the assistant manager is all booking, so it accounts for it. So, total revenue is anticipated, forecasted at next year, at $3.3 million. On expenditures, same thing again, the balance budget, $3.3 million. Uh, on page seven, you'll see a graph of a breakdown of where, where your money goes. A lot of graphs. People can actually see, see how it breaks down. It, like most towns, the majority of your money, 35% of it goes to the public safety police car. Going into general government, uh, when we get to the dollar pages, you're going to see there's changes in, in, in wages that are like to explain when we get to the, the dollar pages. Uh, what I'd like to do is have the ability for like the committees and myself to offer a performance review to do the wages for the non-union office staff. There's also money put in here to upgrade the phone system within the borough building. As you guys all know, we have multiple the phone system. Uh, we got estimates from the lowest one actually was $5,200 that upgrades the whole phone system. Uh, the only difference between the $5,200 one and the $6,200 phone system is refurbished phones. Uh, I kind of say this is the difference, why so just go to refurbished phones to save brand. Uh, we also propose an upgrade in the accounting software next year uh, for $2,600. The accounting software is over 15 years old. Uh, it lacks some security features, and it doesn't allow credit card transactions to automatically post. Now, if like they do a transaction, and then they have to manually take that transaction put it. Now, the municipal features will automatically go to free software. So that's what we talked about. That's where the disconnect was. Uh, employee benefits pretty much stay the same as they say. Uh, there's no increase in dental and life insurance actually. Or cost hospitalization is actually decreasing by half a percent. Uh, and vision insurance is going up by 10%, but it's rather inexpensive. So overall, for all the shorts next year, it's going up 1700 
moving into public safety, police department is budgeted not including benefits, pension, and insurance costs to cost $982,000 next year. Police department wages are increasing by 2.5% next year is the last year of the three year active collective bargaining agreements. Next year we'll have to renegotiate that, but next year wages go up 2.5%. Also within the police department is proposed to, to purchase a police cruiser, replacing the two black and white Crown Victorias uh, with one. Uh, the chief is asking for a Dodge Charger sedan uh, equipped at 45000 And then on the revenue side, we saw the sale of those two surplus police cruisers. you say why he didn't want the SUV? Another SUV? No, he just asked for Dodge Charger. It's a cheaper to do that. Fire department, there, there's no change. We budget 75000 for the loan payment on the ladder truck. When we contribute to their supplies and fuel, in addition to other insurances. Fire hydrants, un unchanged, there's 88 fire hydrants in the borough, and it costs us $21,000 a year to operate. Uh, a new line item is uh, a funding contribution to the EMS agency. Uh, we received a request, there's been a dialogue for a couple months now of including a, a line item in their budget to assist in the operations of South for GMS. Just to balance the budget, I, I propose $5,000 as a starting point. Uh, that's within the budget. Uh, building code enforcement, uh, no change, same, same firm building inspectors on providers. There was a request from the Planning Commission to start and uh, upgrade our comprehensive plan. Um, I, I, include, I did the commission at our last planning commission meeting that I want to apply for a grant, you know, so give me some time on that. But and then we've also talked about doing this over a couple of years. A comp plan cost anywhere from fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. So um, if that state had a new piece of advice, I, I finished the request for proposals on the comp plan, getting the state um, input on it, and we're going to help you with it as well. So the plan is that at your next council meeting, authorized to put the RFP out. Basically, figure out, put some feelers out there, what's the comp plan going to cost? The, comp, the RFP basically says, we're not going to award contract pending grant, uh, pending funding approval from the DC group. So that they know ahead. We get, this is the, the planner's advice, it's actually what it says. We figure out what consultant looks good to us, what they're going to charge. We use that dollar amount as our grant application in the spring to the DCD for the planning effort. I already went back and say, hey, I know you typically only fund multi-municipal plans, but I'm in a predicament where I'm not getting buy-in from our neighbors. I have explained to them multiple times what their issues, what we want to see with a plan. I said, what do I need to do to stay on your radar so that I have a favorable grant application? So you can walk me through all that, and that's why we want to go to our next meeting, offer us an RFP out, and then we put 25000 in the budget next year so we do make the ground running. Two ways. One, if we get the grant, we'll put probably our home actions and we're done. And we're done in 2021. Or if we don't get the grant, we do this over a couple of years, we have 25000 in budget to accomplish that plan. Uh, when uh, the comprehensive plan was uh, updated, what was the last time we got? 15 years ago, 2005. So we do for the 10 years, it was to get a new one. So that said, it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, go along with it. so that's the only real change that the plan is. Uh, public works department. Uh, I, I changed on how we budget public works wages. Uh, in the past, public works wages were budgeted not on the employee or the group of employees. It was broken down on how much time you spent cutting grass, fixing a police car, filling potholes. Fixing a street light, I mean, there was a whole laundry list of how those wages are broken down. And I think as a citizen, you really didn't understand how the public works department operated or what, he, what these guys even cost us. So I kind of just simplified it and put it into two items wages for the foreman, wages for the employees. Really, it was just simplified. The dollar amounts don't change, they go up two and a half percent, reflect the bargaining agreement, also response next year. Rock salt, the contract is the same next year. Um, we have a thing where the contract for this year, we didn't use the whole allocation. So we have an obligation 
to buy that next next year within the next year. What was the difference here? It stays the same. The bid is the same. We have to pay a storage fee. So the storage fee is like six thousand dollars. I mean, how much did we? It's like four hundred tons. Yeah, it is four hundred tons. So yeah. So we have two options. One, we get four hundred tons and store it on the interstate. It probably would just melt away and it would rain. Or we just, I think it's a better business decision to store it there and then we put the estimate for next year and just drop it down and try to adjust it. But that's where we are with Rock Salt. The, the big thing with Rock Salt is the contract price isn't going up. It, it is consistent. Within the public works department, it's proposed to purchase a uh, replacement pickup truck. We have two pickup trucks. One is a 1996 Chevrolet. Uh, it, it, it's seen better days and it needs to replace. Um, to make better use of the money, the, I'm proposing making the, the new truck the sewer operations truck. Uh, be used for when they do vacuum cleaning and crew go out, but every day they do PA1 calls along the sanitary lines. This would be the marketing vehicle, basically to justify splitting the costs of the, the new truck from sewer fund and the general fund. We talked about replacing it with a service body pickup truck. So imagine a pickup truck, but along the beds it has parking doors so that you can store all the holes in it versus coming always back and forth to the building. It still has a bed to haul everything. Um, would be able to put plow on it or this one was not proposed with the plow because with the, the new truck downstairs you have six plows on it. So, so that's where we're at with this. And I'm talking to the foreman, he said this 1996 truck typically uh, it wasn't used for plowing, it was just used to go out and clear sidewalks after the snow. So it'd be the same, same format. Street lighting, no change. There's 436 street lights within the borough, you know, the West Penn Mallow ones. Uh, rates have to go down a little bit, but I still say the, the budget. And then we still maintain the budget for in house repairs to alley resurfacing each year. So we can do two or three alleys in house and then do all the storms for repairs in house. Moving into like recreation, library, and civic events. Maintenance for the park, it shows a decrease, but it really isn't a decrease. It was just taking this public works wages out of the parks and putting them to the wages. Um, the actual maintenance and like utilities in the park is budgeted at roughly around $39,000. Civic events is proposed to contribute towards the Halloween parade and the uh, thing on the avenue. Same status quo has been for the past couple of years now. Funding is also in place to buy the Christmas decorations from the avenue and try to park. <coughs> The allocation for the library stays unchanged, or stays the same at twenty-two thousand dollars. Insurance, pension obligations, flood control. Our MMOs were certified at a September meeting. We do have an increase uh, in non-uniform plan. Uh, this mainly was due to actuarial adjustment of the plan that did too well. And then the police pension plan uh, went down slightly because of paper was down. Assurances, they, they pretty much are matching what the uh, adjuster is suggesting. He's saying that you're going up 3 to 10 percent. Flood control, losing my voice as I'm talking. <laughs> 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 well, I, I got to go. Let me finish this page and I'll take a break. Uh, flood control assessment stays the same, $5,400. Debt, there's a, the uh, due loan at $1.7 million as an annual. Debt obligation of $133,944. This is going to be a pass through from the general fund to the capital project fund. We would pay each one out of the capital project fund. There's a small contingency that we're going to get to on uh, that I basically for police. So we're talking, I'd like to explain when we get to those numbers. And then basically, it's a balanced general budget of $3.3 million. I'm going to just put a glass of water on the back and jump in at page 12. I'm going to do a job. Well, how do you guys talk about the engineers and find out that I fit and believe the truth? I believe it's the first year they have contributed. Correct? It's not from the end of the truth before the end. Not the end as a contributor, she's so bad. 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 She's so bad.
from my understanding. Right. They have a dance. They have a dance. Yeah, she should do it. Yeah. Stop that. Yeah. I don't think they've done that. I heard about 20 times and 21 stuff like that. Yeah, that's just rumor. Yeah, I don't know. 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 I don't It'd be nice that this is a nice start, and then each year we build a plot. That, that's, I think that was our conversation. And how much you want to build on if you go higher now, you, you get, you build up less copies. But from 5,000, what are you planning on to go? 10, 20. I think it might depend on how the budget will set you. Oh, of course, right? Of course, it makes sense. I, I think if you look at it this way, uh, when we talked on the revenue, like we really haven't gotten into the actual numbers. We just did the, the the explanation. If you looked at the revenue side, we have decreases in the Act 511 taxes of business privilege and market power because of the pandemic. Fine revenue is down because of the pandemic. Intergovernmental entitlement is down because of some turnover that we had here because we did just the way reporting is. So you're going to see some budget this next year. That there aren't a lot, but it doesn't allow us the flexibility to be as generous as we want to be. This is really what it comes down to. But next year, it seems like hopefully the world will get a little bit more stable. These things will be a little bit built back in and that cushion grow. <clears throat> That's my take on it. Is this discussion on this one? I didn't have another take. I don't know if you're going to wait to begin that page. Yeah, it was going to go. All right, so now we're going to the general fund. So page 12. These are the revenues on the general fund. If, if you look at this, you know, it's a number of calls. It's 2019 actual, 2020 budget, 2020 as of September 1st, the 2020 year-end forecast. So basically, this is where I predict us to end in year-end. We'll be proposed for 2021, and a change between the 2020 and 2021 budgets. So really, it, it's kind of nice to just follow that last call. That's really... Where, where we're going to have any conversation about it. On real estate taxes, the only real change, there's really not a change in assessed value, it's just we're just matching what actual collections are. Is all that. So it shows about 14000 but it's not that there's any $14,000 worth, it's just it's what 14000 actual collections. No real changes. Real estate taxes coming in at $1,763,000. Uh, Real estate transfer tax going down the line on 310 100 slight increase at 82,000. Post value values in the borough are going up, and then that continues to escalate. Earned income tax is a big change going into next year. If you look back at all the budget actuals that I gave you here, you can see that each year we've been ending $15,000 more than what we budgeted. That number of 15 more than the budget has been very consistent. So that's where this. this Five nine accounts from earned income tax prior year again matches actual collections at 20,000. Um, mercantile prior year shows a decrease, this is kind of just off of the pandemic. Business privilege is down 5,400 dollars, and then again, that's off the pandemic. However, prior year collections have been increasing each year, so I just matched the budget for actual. Overall, F511 tax is about 65900 but it's mainly just getting the earned income tax and I will put it for actual Next one group is pretty much charges for services. The big change in here is the increased fee for street opening permits that brings in $5,800. After all the other adjustments, it's really kind of a wash, and uh, the big notable change there is street opening. The next grouping is fine revenue. It's down 3,000 compared to the 2019 budget or 2020 budget, mainly just off how fines would be and there really isn't much enforcement. Fund uh, interest is down in half, uh, mainly off of just the spread interest rates on that. 
probably for the next year or so. That, that's the best that you can find. Any questions on page 13? All right, going on to 14. These are more intergovernmental entitlements. The big loss here is this pension aid and a slight decrease in the 1% sales tax. Other than that, everything pretty much remains status quo. Going down to the next section, the big change here is the uh, charge for lien letters. Increase that fee to $50, brings in an additional $6,000. So overall, that department will bring in an additional $4,700. Page 15, is miscellaneous revenue. The big increase here is uh, our dividend payment for the insurance trust. I have us budgeted next year at 80,000. This should be budgeted at 70,000. And you can see actual issues after 90,000 and in 2019 is 80,000. So I just increased that budget to be more in line with actual numbers. Miscellaneous sales, it's just 6,000. That's the sale of the two police cars and that pickup truck. Transit shelters. Remains pretty much the same. That's the bus shelters that Lamar has on the avenue. So overall, departmental, uh, this department will have 10,000. Next grouping is uh, contributions for a community day, uh, unchanged. That, that's provided we have a community day. It's but it's a wash on the other side. Please, and over time, is for details. Uh, off duty. I have this uh, an increase next year because the work on the bridge is planned for next year. So, as if we can. Wage and uh, reimbursements from the other funds. Uh, the big increase here is the sanitary sewer wage increase on the administration side. It's basically, it's just five percent of the manager and assistant manager's wages. That's where that number comes from. And then moving to page 16, it's the end of general fund revenue. General fund revenue, like I said before, is 3.3 million. Overall, between years 2020 and 21, it's a net increase of 97,000. Any questions on revenue? All right. Actually, is the proposed um, liquor license giveaway by the government, is that going to affect us at all? I, I would assume it is. But they haven't given us notice that, that it's going to end up that way. They probably will. Uh, it isn't much on our side, it's $1,700. But um, something that someone else is giving away your money is what it's coming down to. Good question. I think if that number was much higher than 1700 I would adjust it. I think it's 1700 all right, so going into page 16, first section is administration. Overall, majority of the wages excluding the uh, assistant manager, office secretary, and police secretary are increasing by two and a half percent. The wages for the assistant manager and the office secretary in this section, I'm asking for the ability to do performance reviews and adjust their wages up to this amount off of a favorable performance review. Uh, going over the assistant manager, the job has changed a, a little bit since I've been here. She's kind of now a de facto finance director. That's all you're looking for, you know. So that's changed to a degree. And uh, her performance is stellar. I think it needs to be recognized. And uh, I want to do that formally through the process. And uh, I'd like to do that through the committee. Then we can do those performance reviews and then make the recommendation on wages by December. But for budget wise, I'd like to have this as a good benchmark as a goal. Uh, I have uh, a compensation survey from 2020 that breaks down municipalities that participated and it shows municipalities with similar sizes, same positions, what are average wages, and it shows where we are. Who's higher, who's lower, who's in the middle? I just want to get in the middle, you know, on some of these some of these positions. So uh, maybe we can just get, discuss that more as a personnel matter within committee. But I, I think there's statistical data that can justify 
uh, a favorable raise on performance review to kind of get us in line a one time thing. You know, I, I don't want to do this every year. You know, I like how we've done hey, the these departments collect the bargain agreement says two and a half percent. There's an umbrella, two and a half percent. I think that's a good business move, but we've kind of had a wage disparity now that I'd like to hit the reset button on off of a favorable performance review of the Does that make sense? Well, normally it's going to be all the same for them to be recording uh, with the PD simply and when all of the truth all the way across. Yes. So you are trying to separate it somehow on performance. Yes, but I don't want to get in the habit of us doing this every year that everyone thinks, oh, I did really well in this huge wage, you know. Uh, I think there needs to be a, a reality check, you know. I can deliver that, but I think right now I don't want to get into the, the rhythm of a performance reviews. And it's with them not being in a union, it's, it's, it's the right set. Well, if we fight them with them, it is a union. Like no, I'm talking about next year with only the three positions, the police secretary, office secretary, assistant manager. Those are the only three that are outside of the two and a half percent. So Joe, is this will coincide with the implementation of the employee handbook and performance reviews? I would like that. And do you have any kind of uh, time frame you're looking at? Um, employee handbook, I have a draft that's done that I emailed the administration committee. So, and then in that handbook is a performance review. So I'd like to use that format. Uh, so that's done. It's just a matter of now getting the committee to accept that. Once the committee accepts it, I'd like to get it to the solicitor to get you know, the legal blessing. Uh, my goal was then to have that adopted by December. So that gives us, you know, a month to get through the committee, get through the lawyer, bounce it off the unions if you have any feedback, and then we can adopt in December, do these reviews in late December, then January 1, we get the ground run. Uh, the only thing that is I don't have now, which it, 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 I can understand the thought that it could have a bearing on performance review, but I, I think the way that reviews are structured that employee handbook, if it really wouldn't, is I don't have job descriptions done yet, but I do have the handbook done. But from the committee standpoint, uh, after the committee, we're going to accept your session of personnel, then you go to the committee. However, you like. Well, yeah, it should be that way. Yeah. All yeah. the council is definitely to be brought in into the conversation on the handle without a talent. I think it's a necessity. But I just don't want to waste the whole commit council's time if the lawyer says this is a no. That that's it, it's coming up soon, so I'm asking for the administration committee that they can start talking about that in the next couple of weeks. Okay. I, I emailed the administration committee that, that handbook last week. You emailed it already? Emailed to the oh, going to. No, I did. Oh. I, I reviewed it with each other, with each other, we didn't actually read that one. Yeah. Well, then, wait a minute. So you want the council, the old council, to vote on that after the lawyer said yes? Yes, to the policy. To the policy, yeah. Yes. We, 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 yeah, we need the, uh, the legal uh, yes. the big in there. Yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. You know, what's at stake tonight, you know, is really just placing a budget item there to yes. potentially increase it could the yeah. on performance. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I think besides these, those couple items, that was the only thing that's rather unorthodox to us here. The rest is rather straightforward. But that's been a big discussion for us for a long time. We wanted to get on the board for bank performance. So we appreciate the effort. It, it looks great. We get time to look at it. We discussed it today, so things that we need to be added, but it does look great. Thank you.
the total. That's your best time. And then there's a decrease in like vacation and personnel, uh, personal time that was the, the payoff at retirement for the formal manager. So that goes away. Um, advertising, I have increased in $2,800. Mainly we're going to have a lot of projects going out to bid next year. So that's the increase there. Another question before you switch the page. I just noted there's been some discussion. I don't mean to throw you on the spot, Jim. I'll ask. There was the, the, the cog was shrinking, you know, by the members. Is, that still, is it still in good standing? Or what's going on? Right now, we're financially solved. We have the problems. We haven't been any rumbling. It, it, it's kind of another misdemeanor. Uh, is anybody left this year? Thanks. The majority of these line items stay the same. The reason why you don't see cog of sales tax reimbursement going down, um, mainly go back to the pandemic. If they set a budget when each time gets the rad tax, on good years, it usually exceed. And then the amount you exceed, you owe 25% of that exceeding amount to the cog. Well, we're not going to exceed budget on rad tax, so that's what we said. On page 17, the seven ones, uh, the big line here is, uh, is the first one's increased 4,200. This said the delegation to A1. That's where that is. That isn't enough to send all of them, but a delegation. What line item is that? That's the first one 400, 1440. Okay. Yeah, there was a second one. Okay. Yes. So overall, the well, administration's got about forty-seven hundred dollars next year. So it's it's rather on this. The next section is treasurer and, and bonding. There there is no change other than uh, a contractual increase in our auditing contract next year. It's the last year of our three-year auditing contract. It's going to be thirteen thousand each year. Next grouping is real estate taxes. Uh, I, I showed a decrease on refunds, mainly just matching prior years. And then overall taxes are for, for status quo, just down that one section, so minus 22. The next grouping on um, page 18 is legal. The budget uh, remains the same. This year, we're going to be over budget. Um, there was a lot going on earlier this year, and then this was also. Legal counsel for the, for the bond or the, for the loan. So that, that's why that's high in the year end. The next grouping is uh, employee benefits and insurances. Like I explained in the earlier section, uh, there really is not much of a change overall. We have $1,700. The next grouping is uh, information technology. Uh, there's uh, money in place for an internet line. Uh, to short here's part with the new cameras that go in next year with the capital budget. Engineering on top of page 19, um, there's an increase uh, in the first line of 5,000, just to grab a project out of bid. This year, the, the engineering budgets are really blown out of the water, and I think it's we took on a lot this year with this Christian forecast. But overall, the bottom of the line of Burrow did perform well to see it the end, but it's just something to pay special attention to. The next grouping is the borough building and basically your public facilities, excluding parks. Now, everything status quo, excluding building maintenance. Uh, this year, this included uh, the carpet in the building. And the that work. And if you look at the 2020 forecast, it shows that any year 43,000. It also includes um, work that's going to be on your agenda next, uh, at next week's meeting to fix the garage and the floor of the police garage is $20,000. Next year, our budget $10,000, and that's 5,000 of this the building uh, phone upgrades, and then it's replacing the flooring within the police station. Moving into the police department, wages 
are about two and a half percent. You'll see patrolmen is down, uh, mainly because they have a new hire. He's coming in next year will be eight percent staff. So that shows that difference. The police court shows a slight increase, and that increase matches the conversation we just had about the office. Really no other important changes within the department here until we get down to on page 21, and uh, that's capital expenditures. Hey Joe, can we yeah. go back to 20 real quick? So a pretty big disparity in the overtime. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that's the big difference between the budget that you have there and the budget that the, the, the second oh, okay. one got passed right. out. I apologize. Yeah, what happened was I, I reviewed the budget you know, with the police chief, and uh, there was a good point made that if you look at all those budget actions, your police overtime has been really over budget each year, and some of it is reimbursable work, some have, most of it always has a good explanation. Uh, so originally I, I matched that budget to match actions. And then there was a conversation that, you know, you really don't want to. Give false hope to someone that there was this whole pot sitting out there. So that was redone to lower the amount back to 25. And then we have money put in place for a contingency fund so that if these overtime run over, which it will, that's how it's allocated. So that it's separate. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But I, I would really encourage you. I think this is where, uh, this is the, we put council in the like, council. This is where I thought was that the budget is more than we meet in this time here at in December we're done. The, the budget report we get in our council package is like a living document that's really something to monitor. I monitor it every week, you know, I go line by line, something that doesn't look right, it gets flat, you know. And uh, I, I think like the overtime some of some departments, something that we need to at least know if it's over. We're all on the same page of hey, this is what happened, this is what's going on, so that it can be justified. When we have met with the finance committee, Joe actually pulls that, he calls it the Bible, uh, out and reviews it with us. And that has been very, very helpful in the first few meetings, just making sure we know where things stand. Okay? okay. All right. So, any before we leave page 20, other any other questions? I right, go on to page 21. This kind of wrap up the police department shows the capital purchases of new car. And then overall, the police department's going on 42000 but the majority of that is, is the police department for next year. The increase in uh, the decrease in the what the state of power do got kind of offset the, the raise increase. Going into the fire department, like I said, the, the, there is no change. Same allocations for the ladder truck supplies, fuel. Uh, the pass through on relief contribution. And then go to page 22, tops it off with the EMS contribution of the $5,000. Is there any other dialogue that we're going to have? Um, <clears throat> it seems almost trivial to me, 5000 And that's just, uh, I, I don't know probably enough about the collection processes. And so I know um, Chris has been here, you know, or Dan, I'm sorry. yeah, he's been here and has uh, talked about people not paying, and so they're down, you know, revenue uh, expenses are up. And I don't know what the collection process is, how they go about trying to get money off of people who don't pay, things like that. I just, uh, I guess, I guess I'm probably a little bit. Uh, I worry that that doesn't look like enough, like we're really helping. I don't know. Yeah. Just, I, I, we're up at any. Yeah, any other discussion on it? Well, I, I agree with you. I never said that it was, it was some, some heights. I, I was trying to say that prior to. I don't know what the right amount is. I like, I like your, um, you know, your philosophy on it. It's something to build on, and we haven't done it in the past, so giving something is. So, it's your first time. Yeah. Well, the ask was fourteen thousand based on the percentage of calls that they made to So that's the way they were breaking it down, coming up with a number so they could justify 
to then get the score 2,000 and they were asked if they signed them up, many calls are critical. And the big problem is not only the collections, but the, the no transports. Um, we have people that get hurt, they come to the call, and the patient the patient the subject is going to be transported. So we still have to take salaries and benefits. Um, CMS reimbursement for an $800 ambulance ride is $200. The people, you know, they, they have memberships, so that helps them with their out of pocket expense. And then they do a fund drive. Uh, the driver, the driver, the driver, the driver. But if you look in the borough news magazine that we had, it, it's been in there for the last several years. The problems that they're having with emergency services across the state. So it is a problem everywhere, not just here. So I think that's why they started soliciting the communities that they serve. So, I mean, Tri State and Mount Lebanon, they've been doing it for years. Shane, he quoted me, they think it might not be $50,000 to the emergency medical services. Obviously, we don't have a budget, but they were looking for something. And have they received any state referral assistance? We talk about they got uh, equipment grants and that uh, email and cable connection grants. But yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they were able to do it. Yeah. I asked about servicing 79. Um, you know, like there's a lot of accidents, you know, do they get any kickback from the state because it's a state drug? And they said they only get it from the turnpike, so they'll get it from the southern government when that comes in. But it's a one time a year cost for reimbursement of $900. So that's what they're going to do. So that's all that they get from the state. Sounds like we're asking you right now do we want to just stay with uh, it? Well, we're asking if there is a way to get a little more. The only way to do it is to roll off that uh, contingency that we're talking about. That, that's where we're coming from. Right. So. How much is the contingency? 17. Two minutes. Two more, and then go 50% of what they're asking. So as you suggest, so we're going to Well, think of it this way how many, how many, uh, how many, Stops that they, how many times have they had to uh, make a run? I just called for a hidden error. So, 200 calls. Was it 500? 500. 500. How much to contribute towards each one of those calls? Because if you can buy them, we'll be able to save that. I don't know. Even though we're sending to you, it's all percentage of the it's just a car accident. They show the car accidents probably two thirds of the time they don't transport the call. I think that's across the board. Two thirds of the time, two thirds of the time. The financial community is $2,500. That's seven. I, I was, I was, uh, if we have any contingency, you know, to move that to $70, I would support it. I'm all for it. Um, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. You know, I need the service that we offer our residents that, you know, people look for that, they expect that will be done. And we get to the library. We get to the library, the fire department, well, we, historical society. They attend all of the functions. Yeah. Well, just like the uh, day on the avenue, they spend the whole day here. Right. I mean, it, they ride their bikes. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the library, you know, it's five five dollars per capita engine, which give me twenty five thousand. But it had to be 22. No, actually, it's more than that. Is it? The work out of the work out? Yeah, it's, it's a lot. If we went out more? Oh, yeah. We're not acting with five dollars. No, it, it's, it's a lot. So we're, we're, we're under there, too. Do you have it? All right. Sure. Yeah, I think it works. Yeah, I think it sounds like we're in agreement. Yeah, if, uh, yes, I would. We need to. It can work today. 
Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next section is pretty much just uh, building and zoning enforcement. Uh, no change there. The next group is 415. Salt Peaks show the 20,000 is comprehensive plan, 25,000. Animal control stays the same. Now, starting here in the middle of Sandra sewer wages, this is where us restructuring of works wages is going to start looking by, but it's just cleaning this up a little bit. As you can see, all these different sections of the budget for public works. So, the only thing here you see is a line of public works forming, that's where public works are going, base wage in, and then public works overtime pay. This is overtime pay excluding. Snow work. So this is weekends in the park, trees come down, sewer emergencies. Goes up slightly. Capital purchase. This year we bought a dump truck, which was 76000 Next year it's proposed by just a pickup slash service body uh, truck. It comes in about 41000 off the last uh, shake off municipal bids. So it shows the Truck split 50 50. Oh, is it four wheel drive? I'm pretty sure that's four wheel drive. The next one of the wages that just sort of classified them. Snow and low time, I kept the same 15,000. The salt contract, like I said earlier, stays the same. Uh, coming into the bottom of page 23, uh, you'll see street sign material blanks uh, up $5,000. This was out of the planning commission, the request to improve pedestrian safety signage around town. Just put money in to start improving some of this signage. Some of these minuses, again, are wages being reclassified. If you come down the middle of page 24, uh, one out of three, uh, 438, 100 street slash alley repair wages, that's where I put the four guys outside of the four lanes. Uh, Wages actually. Other than that, there is no change uh, in any of these line items year to year. Going into page 25, still continuation of public works activities, park work. Um, no changes between the years here. This will provide money to maintain the parks and all the utilities uh, that go on with them. Going on page 26, uh, tops off with the library, uh, piece contribution, same 22,000. Contributions for community events, pretty much the same. Going down the uh, middle of the page, it's uh, MMOs, we went over how well they're going up, uh, and then various insurance packages have slight increases uh, as estimated by our insurance agent. Uh, reserve for contingencies goes off of that overtime discussion 17. Uh, that would then just go down to like 14, 15,000 off of our last bid uh, off of the EMS contribution. Capital improvement fund at 48,000. That's the annual budget. At 133,000, 48,000 already increased. That's the loan payments on the new loan. So, all in all, 2021 budget is in balance of 3.3 trillion. Uh, if you look at the call to the left, the 2020 year end forecast, um, I predict that we're going to end the year with a $200,000 surplus. So, despite having a little pandemic, uh, the borough did very well. And if you back out even the CARES money, um, we're still in a uh, surplus of $100,000. So, it's doing good. So, on page 25, we have that COVID money for 20. Should we put in that day day and go into 21? I mean, I know it's a very small amount, but we didn't budget for that. Uh, that's just what the expenditures were. I, I put it. Is you're not planning for any of those in the future, so it's just one of those. It's just how we maintain things now, it's just how we operate. Uh, I think last year you, you spent a lot of money on a mail that went out with one garbage bill on the code of the That's where a lot of that was lost. And then the rest is in the future. Any other questions on general fund? 
said one mail, we said that one page letter that we sent out. It was over. I choose you. Is that what the mailing line for the live stage? The one that you just sent out? No, I just included up the phone. There was a special COVID bill that had mailing. I can get you the details. No, thank you. All right, going into the sanitary fund on page 29. Um, there's no increase proposed in the borough fee for sewage. However, the Alcazan fee is increasing. Yeah. Uh, so we're kind of mandated just this way our finances are trying to pass that along. So the Alcazan fee is increasing next year by 7%. Uh, the borough fee will stay the same. So the sewer fees currently are $15.23 per thousand gallon. $5.93, 95 cents a month service charge we pay to Alcasan. With the Alcasan increases next year, the sewer fees are going to go to $15.83 per 1,000 gallons and $6.37 per month customer service charge. So this will be adopted by ordinance when we do this in December. Um, regarding, we'll just skip ahead. Uh, I wanted to point out on page 31 is, is a map of your sewer system. And interesting thing, the red bubbles you see in this map are sections of sanitary line that need to be relined. So there's a substantial cost to basically bringing these all up to where they need to be for consent orders and just operation maintenance plan. It's almost 600 some thousand dollars. Uh, Majority of it, as you can see, is within this yellow watershed here. Interesting conversation. The yellow in this one green section, so like the Terrace Avenue section, tie into the McLaughlin Run trunk line as a multi municipal line. Um, Elkisan is in, we're having talks with them to take ownership of that line. There's issues between the three communities, us, Bethel Park, and Upper St. Clair on that line. Uh, it doesn't have the capacity. Uh, it, it, it would put restrictions on tap ins and the upstream communities. So, Elkins has taken over a lot of these major trunk lines throughout the whole sewer system, and the McLaughlin Run connector has been a priority. So, what, what they're hoping, what we're hoping to do is get that whole watershed up to par before we turn it over. Uh, they have what's called grow grant money that reduces water infiltration, you know, into the line. What they want to do is find ways to reduce infiltration and they're prioritizing the watersheds that they have priority to possibly take over. So the McLaughlin Hunt is high on their priority. So we've been talking with the engineer of doing a grant project that fixes all these red sections of pipe next year in a grant program. And we've already met with Elvis at once. We're going to be meeting with them again next week virtually. Uh, to sort of pitch the idea for this grant application. Our match is like $156,000 uh, towards that. And you see, as the majority of the sewer issues in town would be rectified. Um, Tony the engineer, they think that this is pretty, pretty favorable for grant application because we're at the basically one of the last ends of grant uh, cycles for, for through grow, and the borough's never been awarded. So kind of makes you off higher on food chain. So this is our priority next year uh, when it comes to deficiencies. So, so that 156, is that part of the grant or is that cash? No, that's cash and we're going to show that and I'll show where it comes from. But like if we didn't get this grant, we're going to have to start putting in a phase program to get back on this O&M plan. Uh, after the flood, we kind of got off of O&M. If, if you saw last month's council meeting, the CCTV bids are up. Uh, Closing our contracts in 2018, uh, we haven't had any since the flood because of it's our priority shift. So we need to get back on that so we don't have more of these red bubbles pop up. So going into the sewer part, uh, sewer collections. I, I wanted to just point out to you guys on, on your budget to actual sheets, uh, you'll see actual collections for the past four years. Uh, you've been making 93% of budget. So instead of budget 100% next year, I took this down to 93% of 
of what we think we're going to get for water usage in town. And then I did the opposite increase of seven percent off that ninety-three percent uh, increase. So when it shows a decrease of fifty-four thousand, we're not anticipating any decrease revenue or change in anything. It's just we're just becoming more conservative on the way we're budgeting. So I just want to make sure that kind of looks scary, but everything status quo. And then we're going to see this wash itself out and what we pay out is It's kind of nice. The opposite number was also 93. And you saw three, four years of 93, 93, 93, 93. So reset the clock at 93. That's all we're doing. Uh, expenditures, uh, the pass through for the wages, max the general fund. Engineering, I, I keep the same. Uh, if you look this year and then last year, you can see there hasn't been much engineering on sewer work, kind of because we got away from O and M work. We're going to get back into that it's just to keep the system where it should be. Uh, legal stays the same, water billing stays the same, uh, no change in supplies. Materials for sewer maintenance that's work, you know, whatever the guys need in house and do a small repair. Sewer vacuum camera that's using the Char West Talk truck, they come in four weeks a year. They also need money for emergencies. Uh, payment to Alcastan, I have it going down, and then I have the increase of 7% added on top of it. So that's why it shows a decrease, even though we're going up 7%. Um, Newsletter, I have $1,200 budgeted in here, and this is going to pay for the postage on the annual newsletter. Because the only cost we have on the annual newsletter is the postage, $1,200. There'll be an article in there about sewers. So, kind of makes it even. Uh, advertising, there's no, no advertising expected for next year. Source reduction. There, there's no source reduction project proposed for next year. However, level five corrections are pretty much all our sewer work. So all our sewer actual construction projects, are, we have 401000 allocated for it. In all reality, there's probably only $200,000 worth of projects for next year if that grant goes through. And if the grant doesn't go through, we have 400000 to start facing this work in more These other new line items, our requirements to make that watershed eligible for the grant. We have to do flow monitoring, survey of manholes. So that's the two twenty-five thousand dollar allocations there. That's essentially engineering. And then lastly, capital purchases is money for the sewer maintenance. So it's a balanced budget within the sewer fund again at one point six million dollars. And then if you look at the third column from the right, twenty twenty. We forecast to end uh, above this, uh, revenue above expenditures of fifty-four thousand dollars. So the, again, this fund's very healthy as well. There's a nice reserve in there. So if something happened catastrophic within the sewer system, there's a nice reserve to pay for. Any questions? Uh, moving on to the garbage fund. Uh, I'll skip to page thirty-six. Um, on page 35, it gives a narrative that basically go out to explains how many accounts there are. There's 2042 to 2051 uh, trash accounts. It, it varies. Uh, there is a slight increase in the garbage contract next year. So if we scroll down through these. The big one that shows a decrease of $5,600 is the grant reimbursement. This is us only doing one household hazardous waste collection event next year and not multiple. And like we did this year, we just did one. We should just do the same thing. Uh, garbage user contract essentially stays the same. There's no change in what we were going to charge for garbage. Uh, even though it is going up slightly, if you see on page 37, uh, the contract only goes up $7,000, but the fee is solid enough to absorb that $7,000 increase, so there's no change in garbage fees for next year proposed. So garbage revenue uh, is pretty close to this year, minus that grant reimbursement of $437,000. Now on the expenditure side, uh, there's a slight increase just to match the, keep up with the increase of, you know, the, the clerk doing garbage in-house. Uh, 
computer program uh, says twenty five hundred dollars that is funds that we're doing already. Printing no change. Uh, the only thing here is we we've only budgeted for the newsletter within here. Uh, like last year, we spent twenty seven hundred dollars. This year we budgeted twenty four hundred dollars. Next year I'm just asking for a hundred bucks. Uh, this pays for that quarterly newsletter update just to be printed and go in with every garbage bill. So uh, if you saw last garbage bill, there was a little one page update. I want to do that every quarter. I'll, I did it in house and go out with every garbage bill. So it's just an update. And then that just pays for the printing of them. I, I had a bunch extra printed and we had to hand deliver to the apartment buildings that don't have garbage bills. And then I have a bunch here in each counter, in the library, the coffee shop, just so that people know what's going on. Uh, page 37 uh, shows a small increase for the contract for garbage next year, we give up $7,000. Uh, there was a very big reserve that was actually budgeted. Uh, I, I should have decreased it, but there is a, a fund balance in there to handle substantial bad debts. But the bad debts probably be managed pretty easily. So overall, it shows that when this year, uh, my estimate is $6,500 ahead. Last year it was 17,000. It may be even more. But each year if it's still going to sustain itself. Any question on garbage? The capital project fund is kind of resurrects, uh, resurrects uh, what we our whole discussion we had regarding the loan. <laughs> so it summarizes the revenue source. The revenue source is essentially the pass through from the general fund to the uh, capital project fund for the loan payment, and then any grants that are due. Next year, there's two grants on the contract that will be, that will be given us next year. One is the $300,000 for the bridge, and $70,000 that we just got for the storm sewer separator project. So that shows us the revenue side. There's a number of capital projects that are proposed. I explained them all in detail of error. So if we jump to the numbers on page 41, I, I want to show this two ways. Because uh, a lot of our projects are going to be starting late this year and being carried over to next year. So, and some of them are under contract and started, some aren't. So, it's kind of a little bit fuzzy on the bookkeeping, on what year they hit, and I didn't want to separate it and make it look dirty. So you're going to see 2020 projects like um, the Bar Hill Stormwater Project, the Flood Projects and stuff are all hitting 2020, but in all reality, some of that may hit 2021, but at the end of 2021, the bottom lines that we're going to match, and, and I, I want to explain them. So on the revenue side, this is kind of maybe an update for everyone on where we are with the number of capital projects. You show total revenue of capital projects is 3.1 million because a lot of these grants are reimbursement based. We probably won't get these reimbursements the first quarter of next year. But it's, it's at the time I was doing this in September, it was rather uncertain, but I don't want to change anything. So we'll see if it all ends up the same. Um, Next year, you'll see cash on hand of 1.8 million. If you go to the bottom of page 42, you'll see, you know, at the bottom of the second or third column from the left or from the right, 1.76. That's kind of what I anticipate us ending this year if we paid off all these projects. And I show that number pretty much coming over and carried over from the top uh, on the other side. So there's the 1.8. Next year, like I said, the only revenues that are coming out of this couple of grants and then the loan proceeds. Uh, next year, the projects that, that aren't already committed to, that we're proposing to do next year with the loan, is the Warner Avenue Wall and Stabilization Project. Um, we just received notification yesterday that that grant was denied for the second time. So that project's on us. That's what it's coming down to. We, we've applied twice and it's been denied. Oh, that project alone is three hundred seventy-four thousand. I talked to the engineer to say, "Hey, you still feel that that number is good? We wanted to run with it the loan proceeds, like we intended to." He said, "Yes." So he's going to get me an estimate for the engineering so that we can give him the notice for receipts. Hopefully, at our next meeting, so that we can get this rolling to do all the engineering. There's some cute technical work that he's done, so that we can get this out the bit of the winter, maybe start in the spring. 
So the, the railroad has not been on the road. I don't have to. Okay. I don't have to. Well, that's the discussion that probably will come out of this coming up. Yeah. Okay. So next year, you'll see the bottom of page 41 on the 2021 project. So something new, it will show the, the Warner Avenue project. 2020, this is 305000 to pay for Mason Avenue Wall, the Borough Building Law Project, Harvard's on um, Marshall Street, and the picnic shelters were all paid out of that lump sum. The Barnes and Sword Project currently under contract. That, that should be done by the end of end. The block with park upgrades. Um, I guess it has an update the contract for Mobileye, started to work. He started today, got to strip in the top sort off the field. Um, I said you guys an update. There's a delay on the Jane Way project. Um, the stop log is a specialty project in 16 weeks on back order, so that won't start until the early September. Uh, going to page 42, uh, flood mitigation. I have to check. Uh, the capital project uh, for Chartier Street. $588,000 in one lump sum payment to PennDOT next year. The bridge project, I mean, we have $788,000 to PennDOT next year. Five hundred eighty-eight dollars is a contribution for, uh, for a short pier street, the widening of it. $200,000 is a bridge, but PennDOT, it's a good thing for us, married them into one project. And there's a contract that once that project's done, we owe them one check for $788,000. The loan expenditure is the, the monthly payments. Storm sewer separator project is 142000 70000 of it is, is a grant, and that kind of enhances our S4 program. Uh, the roof on the borough building is 30 years old, needs replaced, shows money put aside for the roof next year. Churchill Park Rehab, uh, $609,000 is budgeted for that. Uh, one grant has been denied. The other grant is still pending. I got a phone call from that grant source uh, about a month ago asking a lot of questions and asking for some supporting information. So that kind of gives me hope. You know, usually it's been, it's out the last day. So that, that's looking good. So, but at least puts a little chalk this one on, which is about 250. And then it budgets 12,000 out of this fund to put the cameras in the park. And then once we're done with all the projects next year, the capital project fund will have $166,000 in it. And then if you, earlier in this conversation, I said that the fund balance is at 1.6 million. The finance committee is gonna make a recommendation early next year to take some of that fund balance and put it in the capital project fund to replenish it. So essentially what this chart does that this budget matches the chart that I gave out for the loan budget. So it just follows the cash. Any questions on capital projects? So really, next year, if you think about it, is Chartier's Park, Warner Avenue, and finishing up everything. We're just getting started. So next year should be really, really active. Liquid Fuels Fund, uh, which is Highway, Highway 8 Fund, Again, it's a continuation of paying for road projects. Uh, I show a carry of cash on hand after we pay off this, this year's road program. It shows $20,000 estimated left in that fund. So I show that going over to be towards next year's road projects. Uh, the state gave us notice that our next year's allocation is $135,000. Uh, this year we got 150000 So it, there's a significant decrease uh, in liquid fuels tax that the state is projected to give us next year. It may be more, maybe less, but I, I think their good estimate is 135. I think a lot of it's just due to the pandemic and other people were trying to buy gas. Yeah, sure. So that's another hit on the pandemic part. So revenue is pretty much close to this year, one, one, 156,000. Again, I just showed them right out the road paving next year. Uh, the road committee will have to meet in the next you know, next month or so to pick what roads with 156 and want to put off the contract next year. On page 46 through 50, 
through 53 is uh, the road rating system that was recently done of all the streets in the borough, and the engineer rated them from the worst to the best. So there's statistical data on which streets we should pay next year um, from uh, an engineering perspective, and there's a budget uh, put to each roadway to what it would cost. So some of these roads are done in-house that you'll see on here, like Spruce Street and, and Lawrence. Spruce Street, uh, the Bob Works is talking about doing in-house next year. But you see some of these were already done this year in-house from the Bob Works Street can be scrapped. But the other ones, I would recommend that we have that Bob Works Committee meeting. We look at these worst roads that have a rating of three and do a budget of 156. So just for the record, the Bank Street is a state-owned street. So we can't do it. No. But we can beg and talk to your legislator. Or push them to get through the new bank street because it is it's giving back. Yes, yes. These are borough streets. So when this chart gets published with the budget, these are only borough streets. So there's a number of state roads within the borough. Presley, Bank, or of course, Leslie, Pukno, Chartiers, the Run, and then Barville, and of course, the county. So I think mean, maybe people, it'd be nice if people understand what's, what's a borough road and what is. Uh, any questions on liquid fuels? Uh, put on the next the appendix. You know, this is something new for next year uh, as a cost saving measure, we can enact our tax order section by resolution versus ordinance. So we don't have to pay for advertising because we're not the village is the same. So next year our in December is proposed to enact um, on page 57 is your tax rate next year by resolution versus ordinance. So to say it's an advertising cost. Page 56 was the adoption ordinance for the, for the budget. Page 58 through, uh, through 73 is your fee schedule. Your fee schedule, if you look at page 59 on, is right from your codified ordinance. So when you go to your fee code, the first thing that comes up is fee schedule. And, and this is where this is published. This is where this is printed out from. Uh, there was a couple of fees that we suggested to be changed in, in, in a bunch of talk, be it a lead letter or street opening. You'll see them uh, crudely just mark here. But when it comes time in December, this would just be retyped. Uh, if there's any talk of changing fees, uh, if we can have committee meetings this month so that by the end of November, we can have a final fee resolution in place for our December meeting, and then that would be incorporated in our final budget. The last thing that's not included in here, but was on your table of contents, was your uh, sewer fees. Uh, last year, your sewer fees were enacted by ordinance. Uh, the way that ordinance is written, they can only be changed by the ordinance. I asked the solicitor to change that so that moving ahead for 2022, if we're only going to be doing an Alcasan increase, we can change that by, by resolution versus to eliminate these advertising costs. So you're going to see on your November agenda an ordinance for the our early ordinance for next year on our usual year end would be your sewer fees. But moving into 22, I'm going to try to get that by resolution. So the solicitor's working on that to look at that question. And then that's the budget. And then within this packet, to summarize a lot of the conversations uh, and the information I had, you'll see this summary, three-page summary. It breaks down a lot of the talking points. So if you had delivery messages to citizens or whatnot, these are just good talking points to have. And then after we if are comfortable with a doctor we want to advertise, you know, when we talk about the EMS change, uh, it will be on the agenda potentially for next week to authorize advertisement. Uh, we'll get this on the website, press the bulletin board, and uh, we'll make sure that the public has it. If they're fine. Are there any other comments? Good job. Thank you. And you did a wonderful job. Very, very professional done. Nice to see you. I, I, you know, I couldn't wait for I told the to the day I was seeing this. I called you, Joe. I mean, it was it's just refreshing to see the way you were your nice expression. 
I'll let you go. You know, thank you to the finance committee. I appreciate the time you guys put into it. It looks great. It's very, very thorough. We had a really good finance committee meeting last week that made this meeting a lot easier. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice balance the tax increase. That's what everyone wants. Are there any other comments here? I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up to see if anybody has comments. Are you gonna see a condition on I, I, whatever it's set on, I don't touch it. I think we might have we have uh, comments from the public. Sure. Okay. Uh, I, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, look forward to uh, to seeing the budget. Uh, you know, I thought the uh, the phone system item. Have you guys looked into the uh, the Comcast and the others where they provide it as part of the monthly fee? No, I don't. Joe? Think have what do you mean in terms of microphones and stuff? No, early in the in the in the budget, you had a budget line item to replace the telephones, or did I misunderstand what that was? Yeah, the, the phone system within the building is antiquated, to say the least. And uh, they look at repair as a replacement, and replacement seemed to be the, the right thing to do. It's the repair is not high; it's just that it's at the line. Yeah. One of the plug. And I, I think many of you in your business worlds have seen that what this is moving towards are IP-based phones that are part of a seat and service contract. But Comcast has it. I know our firm has done that in our in our office, um, and it's a, it's a monthly seat license. Again, it's 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 the way it seems to be moving forward technology-wise. I was curious if the borough had looked at that new technology. Again, it's not that new. It's about, it's got to be at least five, six years old, but uh, it, it eliminates the budget of $5,000 or $6,000. Yeah, so, so to answer your question, no, we haven't. Um, as far as the store fund, uh, yeah. I can't hear what you're saying, so. I'm not saying anything. You have the floor. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I jiggled it. Anyway, um, on the SOAR fund, um, I, I was going to again mention the uh, the camera and the CCTV. You know, as we're all aware, the majority of the line is in the laterals from the houses. And we have still not looked at uh, at uh, cameraing those laterals as we're cameraing cameraing the the uh, the trunks. Um, you know, I I think Bill Henderson and, and and Bruce were there when I uh, when I brought this up years a few years ago. Uh, it certainly would reduce the inflow and infiltration. And uh, I don't know, Joe, Joe Cower, have you? Uh, have you seen that kind of a project? No. I know some towns are, are required as a point of sale. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I have to tell you I'm not an advocate of that. But Joe, I'll, I'll send you something on it. Other than that, thank you all very much. Everyone's laughing when you're going to fail. They're all you know, terracotta. You guarantee they're your whole town. And that's ten thousand dollars plus that he's supposed to put out. That's what that's what's in the law. What else, Pat? You got anything else? No, I, 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 as I was saying, thank you very much. That was that was all, and thank you all very much for uh, for your work. Thanks for sitting in. Anybody else out there have a comment? I don't see anybody else. Um, no, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you guys for listening in. Uh, with that, we can end. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. And on the second one, that. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And this meeting is adjourned.